What's up, peeps? In today's video, I'm sharing something a little different. Mr. CCDIY and I started our bedroom makeover last fall. Actually, bedroom and bathroom. But winter is the perfect time to be out in the workshop flipping furniture, so we took a break for a few months. Now that summer is back in Phoenix, I have to take a lot of my work back inside, so it felt like a great time to get back to this makeover. To kick things off, Matt will be building a closet and installing some long overdue doors. So today, I'm sharing that process. But if you're here for furniture refinishing, don't worry. While Matt is doing most of that closet work, I'm giving our old dressers a whole new lease on life. I'm Jen, welcome or welcome back to Copper Cactus DIY. And now that Matt has the plastic up, let's get into this. Since he's building a new wall, he wants to attach the studs directly to the wall and into the framing through the drywall. So he pulled out the multi-tool and cut back the trim on both sides. Then he got busy installing the first stud. Now, these might look a little brown and weird. That's because they actually came from a shelf unit that we broke down while we were doing our garage makeover. And I recently did a workshop tour out there in the garage, which was tons of fun. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I will link to it down in the description. One of the most important parts to any project is having a solid plan in place before you cut the first piece of lumber. For our closet door project, I laid this out weeks and weeks ago so I would know the right amount of lumber to buy and I would actually know all my cuts uh, before I ever even put a single tool out. He used a hammer drill to pre-drill holes through the bottom plate and into our concrete slab. Then he used that same drill to drive concrete screws and secure the plate into that concrete slab. He also built some simple boxes that will span the top, and these are basically going to act as a header. They're built like a pony wall almost, but attached to the ceiling and not the floor, if that makes sense. We didn't do a formal header for a few reasons. One, the doors are super light. Two, the wall isn't structural. And three, everything will get tied into the ceiling joist. Now, I'm not giving dimensions here because everyone's will be different. If you do this project, you'll wanna take measurements for your unique space. Just remember to take into account the thickness of everything you'll use drywall, trim, extra supports, and even joint compound thickness could come into play for your final finished wall. Matt did all of that planning well in advance, and having those plans helped him get this right on the first try. Oh, and yep, we're totally old school pencil and graph paper peeps around here, but you can also do this in different software programs. Well, everyone, it took some pretty creative clamping to be able to get this held together because the studs were so warped, but these clamps seem to have done the job and we're now straight and square. I was able to get the wood attached to each other and get everything straightened out enough that I could remove the clamps. So the next step is I'm going to try and plumb up the cripple studs, make those as good as can be, 
try and get the ceiling beam attached in just a couple of places where there are studs and then I'm gonna call it a day. Up next, drywall. But drywall install is kind of repetitive and boring, so here's a fun montage of artistic drywall cutting. Drywall mud is both a blessing and a curse in my life. I'm pretty good at it, but I'm also usually super obsessive about making it perfect, which of course is fruitless because there's no such thing, right? I mean, at some point, I need to just walk away from my sanity. But this time, I don't have to worry about that so much. The walls in our bedroom were textured when we moved in, so I'm planning to lean into that hard. Through the course of this bedroom makeover series, I'm painting, texturizing, and transforming just about every square inch of our room, including ceilings. I did two coats on any screws, and I ended up doing three on every seam with tape. I used the mesh tape so it needed a little more to cover. There's no real reason other than it's just my personal preference. So Matt and I have this joke that we want to live in a cave. We call it cave life. Our blinds and curtains are pulled 90% of the time because peeps, Phoenix is really bright. And in the summer especially, that sun rises at an unconscionable hour. And then so do I, which makes me pretty cranky pants. I mean, there's a reason I voice over, you know? Literally nobody should meet early morning me. Anyway. The cave idea actually started brewing in my head, and I pulled out all the design ideas I could to start creating our bedroom cave. Dark colors will feature huge in this space, and like I said, some texture too. I sanded to smooth any rough or pointy bits, but I'm not sanding to flat, and I'm not really filling in divots. It was actually kinda nice to get to move pretty fast across the compound this time.
And after I finished up, Matt could tag back in to install the door jams. That's where he'll attach the door hardware and it finishes off the inside areas of the wall. He installed everything with his finish nailer and I won't lie, having the compressor in the house wasn't super pleasant. On the left side, he ended up scrapping in two pieces to make one top door jam piece. But, you know, Matt made it work. And he finished off all the corners by adding the door trim to the outside face. So one of the last steps involved in putting up the closet doors is installing the track system for the doors. Um, we got a relatively inexpensive set of closet doors that ride on a metal track in the ceiling and a metal track in the floor. So one of the openings is just a little bit short, it's three quarters of an inch short, so I've got to cut those. And in order to do that, I get to use the new toy that Jen recently got me which is a Black & Decker 20-volt um, battery-powered jigsaw, which is a huge upgrade from what we had. With the track cut, he got to installing. First, he marked the placement for screws, then drilled through to the concrete below our floor. Vacuumed out the dust, and permanently attached the track to the floor. Then he repeated all of that two more times on this first side. And then Matt could finally get the doors installed. But before we get to that, let's talk about the other side of the room, the bedroom foyer. or as I like to call it, the cave entrance, and the perfect spot to house our dressers. But these things are feeling every bit as dated as they look. I did them about five years ago with a homemade chalk style paint, and I used latex and plaster to create it. They've held up okay, but the vibe just does not go with the new direction of the room, so it's time for a change, and I'm getting them started right now. I got everything scrubbed with some degreasing dish soap, a clean rag, and some warm water. Then I wiped everything off with clean water and a new rag. I do dust these regularly, but my dresser in particular is coated in makeup and hairspray and a bunch of other products, so it definitely needs the scrubbing. When I did these originally, I top coated them with a dead flat varnish and the underlying piece is made out of a thermofoil coated particle board. They are not solid wood, they are also not the sturdiest pieces, but that meant they only needed a scuff sanding in order to get a tooth for my paint. After sanding, I wiped everything down with another clean rag and some warm water, then left everything to dry, which took about five minutes here in Phoenix.
Then I got a first coat on as the base for a faux wood grain. And I'll be doing that faux in next week's video, so don't forget to subscribe today. And keep an eye on my community page for sneak peeks on these dressers all week long. I did get a first coat on the base, and even though it looked like AstroTurf, <laughs> the tone was exactly what I was going for. And I knew once it was fully coated, it would be a really nice complement to the color that I'm painting in the foyer or cave entrance. This is Evergreen Fog from Sherwin-Williams, and I can definitely understand why it's the color of the year. It's that perfect mid-tone green. Not too gray, not too yellow, just perfectly neutral. And I used it in the bathroom too, which is right off of this space, so it goes really well together. Just a side note, I'm not being too careful cutting in at the ceiling because I will be painting ceilings too. That's going to be in a later video though, so leave me a comment with your guesses for what color you think I'm going to paint our ceilings. And painting the first coat in our little bedroom foyer is where I actually wrapped up for the day. One step closer to cave life, baby. And let me just say thanks so much for being here and watching. I'm really excited to share our bedroom makeover with all of you. Like I said, I'm wrapping up the dressers next week, so subscribe now and you won't miss seeing if the AstroTurf vibes actually settle down. But that's all I've got for you today. Hang in to see how these closet doors look now. Thanks to Matt for doing the install, and thanks to all of you for being here. Later, peeps!